Welcome back. This is Michael with the S&P 500 futures. And on this trading day, I was trying to practice doubling down, trying to add on some extra risk when I thought it was warranted. So you'll see that show up a couple of times. Actually, in this first trade here, I did double down. And then you may have noticed I did take a quick short break. Life has been pretty good recently and, you know, I've met some amazing people that, you know, I just thought I would take a step back, enjoy life for a bit. Trading doesn't have to be everything. I can always come back. And so, you know, I think if you've been trading a lot, you should also think about that. Don't overindulge in something. Always find different outlets. So let's quickly look at this trade. Actually, it's already over by the time I've talked. But we can go into our split screen mode here and I can quickly talk about what happened with this trade. And you may have noticed too, this is trade number two. So I also have to talk about trade number one. Trade number one was back here. I shorted off of this red candlestick. And then the trade you just saw, that one was down here. So let's talk about trade number one first. First of all, we have to think about what the market is doing. Remember when I trade I like to look at the overall market picture and then I like to think about, okay, where are the trap traders going to be? Who is going in the wrong direction? Who is trying to go for some kind of home run trade? And they're really, you know, being aggressive when they shouldn't. So if we think about it, the market is selling off. There's a big sell off from the open. Obviously we can say that this is a bear trend. And so when I see this big green bullish candlestick, it immediately tells me that there's probably some aggressive buyers here. You know, if you bought at the bottom, you're probably okay, but someone who's, you know, getting a, a little too excited and they're coming in off of the top here, they're most likely going to get trapped. You know, if you look back at charts, how many times do you see these, you know, even if you look up here, how many times do you see these big bullish candlesticks just instantly reversing? It's almost never. So when I see this red candlestick, it's telling me that you know, we can come in and hopefully take out their stops if they get trapped and if they get flushed out. So that's exactly what happened here. I went in short and we nabbed a quick profit. And then as you see, the market continued to sell off, make some legs down. And what I noticed is that there was a trend line starting to form here. So we can draw it off of the top here. One, two, and then three. And that's exactly where I sold off of this bearish candlestick. And now again, we can look and think about who is trapped in this moment. So the first obvious place that you'd probably buy is down here on the double bottom. And if you bought that double bottom, I'm sure you're fine. You probably took profits at the EMA, or you may have even seen this trend line and you took profits up here. You're doing great. Now, the people who are not doing great, someone who saw this massive green bullish candlestick, they're probably buying in really late and they're a little nervous. People who bought the pullback to the EMA, obviously this looks like a good setup, but if you zoom out and you look at the bigger picture, we're in a sell-off and we really don't want to be buying near the highs of a trend line. So already we're seeing two areas where there could be some trap traders. And with that in mind, I think it's pretty good to come in, especially off of this red candlestick, bouncing off of the trend line, looking for a sell. And then as we came down further, I saw that there was this lower high. And to me, that was my opportunity to try and double down. I thought that, okay, this is the second time, you know, if we extend this trend line, this is the second time that we are touching this trend line. It's the second rejection. We're crashing down through the EMA. I think this is a good opportunity for us to not only take out the stops here, which these are going to be the easiest stops, right? If you were a late buyer, you're probably going to have your stop below the swing low, but we may also take out the stops down here at the bottom. So I thought that we could sell and you know, we've already seen what happened. Obviously it went against us the moment it sold and took out that swing low down here. We ripped back higher. I didn't have a lot of time. I was kind of panicking. I couldn't really, you know, get out of my position in a great fashion, but Luckily, we were able to get out and it wasn't able to completely take out our stop loss, which probably would have put in a sus in the red here. Uh, we were able to get out at a, you know, close to break even point. So overall, I think management was semi okay. I'll definitely say that execution was good here. I think this was the right spot to sell. Maybe not the right place to double down and maybe not the right place to go for that big swing. But 
all in all, I think it was okay. All right, so we're on the third trade here. And what you'll notice is that it hasn't actually been that long. If we take a look back at the past activity, we actually did take out that stop loss. It was a little unfortunate that it happened after I got stopped off, but you know, that's trading. It's bound to happen. Things don't always go our way. And then the market shot up and then has been bleeding out ever since. So when I see this type of pattern, the first thing I like to think about is that there are going to be tons of trapped traders. All of these bullish candlesticks probably have trapped traders in them and their stop losses are, you know, somewhere down here, down near this swing low. And then ultimately, you know, the ones who are holding out the longest, they're going to be trying to hang on at the lows of the day. So already these stop losses have been taken out. But what I've noticed is that we did try to make an attempt to pull back and immediately we got this double top, which I think is a pretty good entry. And then if you notice after that, we did come in with this lower high, which is going to be, you know, if you could think about it as either the second or the third rejection for buyers. So this is another opportunity where I thought it was good to double down, especially you'll notice that there's probably going to be a lot of buyers coming in here. And really, realistically, they should be thinking about taking profits at the EMA. So when I see it get rejected twice, three times at the EMA, I think this is my turn to step in, my turn to sell, and hopefully flush out anyone that has yet to take profits. So I think that pretty much explains this trade. And if we look at how it's progressing, it's not the greatest. So we have to look at how these candlesticks are forming. First of all, Every time it's tried to sell off, it's making this wick, which at the time was making me really nervous. Usually when we see a sell off, let me see if I can back up here. We want it to kind of flush down like this. You have these big red candlesticks. Maybe there's some indecision in between, but then it follows up with more selling and ultimately it flushes down and takes out the area that you're trying to get to. But in this case, you'll notice that wick and then green candlestick, wick, green candlestick. There's a lot of fighting. And, you know, obviously in hindsight, I probably should have gotten out as we made this higher low here. You know, it's kind of almost like a triple bottom. Three times it tested that. Ultimately, it's starting to bounce with all of this, you know, bullish energy. It's breaking out above the EMA here. There's a lot of bad things. And I think at the time, I was honestly you know, just being stubborn. I, I thought that the market could continue to sign off, but the market right here, it's telling me that it wants to go up higher. And so, you know, obviously it's not the best management. Again, I think execution was fine. I think we were able to take off. Actually, no, we were not able to hit any of our profit targets, which is unfortunate. So as it's going up, it looks like that we're going to take the full loss here. And if I continue on, we can just look at the spoiler screen here. We did make that triple top here, which is really interesting, but then ultimately it pushed it up higher and my stop loss was above the double top here. So you will see in a second on the right hand side that I do get stopped out with this trade. It's a little unfortunate, especially when it was one that I did double down on. And so that is going to hurt. And I think what makes it even worse is if we scroll back over the market did actually flush down after it took out my stop loss here. So sometimes when I see these type of trades, it makes me want to have a wider stop loss, but then I always have to remember, you know, what is my trading plan? The way I trade is I like to have these more precise stop losses. It's okay if I get taken out because there are also opportunities where, you know, it just flushes down and life is pretty easy and you know, you never know. The market doesn't always have to stop here. It could take out your stop loss and it could just continue higher. It could just keep burning through your account. So I think it's always good to just get out when you think it's necessary to get out. And unfortunately, if the market wants to reverse on you the moment you get out, I think that's just a fact of the market you have to accept. All right. And I like to end on a high note here. So we did dig ourselves into the hole back here on this last trade, brought us into the negatives, but the market continues on, we continue selling. And what I notice here is that we get this double top here. 
So we notice that the market is trying to again reverse. It makes this double top. And then how do we identify these trap traders? Well, I see that there is this double bottom here. And I imagine that if you're a buyer and you're thinking about reversing, you're going to salivate. You're going to see this double bottom and you're going to think that this is going to be the greatest area to buy on the pullback. Maybe it's going to shoot up, make another second leg higher, but then immediately this big red candlestick forms, it starts to sell off. And this is where I want to come in and sell. I want to trap these traders who are trying to buy the double bottom. I noticed that there was the double top that happened prior to this. So with that, there is the force. There is some rejection, right? You're going to have sellers that are coming off of this double top. It's starting to sell down and then people are going to get trapped in. They're going to get tricked. They're going to think that this double bottom is somehow going to stop this bigger market pattern. Maybe that works sometimes, but in my opinion, if you have this greater force that is capitalizing down on this smaller force, the smaller force is most likely not going to be able to stop this big push. So we get this big red candlestick. It starts to sell down. And thankfully for us, this is a pretty painless trade. We come down, we take out the double bottom, and then it tries to reverse off of that double bottom. And you know, it is a little scary like last time when you have these green bullish bars that happen right after you take out the immediate stop loss. It can get scary, but if we look on the review side, it completely flushes down and we are able to hit all of our profit targets, which it's really great to say, especially after taking some big losses on some double downs, not always the best way to, you know, go about those. It kind of sucks sometimes. Obviously this trading day could have been a little better if I hadn't taken the risk, but I think it's always good to test things out, especially, you know, I, I had some good confidence in those trades and maybe they didn't work out the way I wanted it to work out. So I'll have to go back and review those.